สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today I am making a classic recipe that is long, long overdue. I'm making Thai fish cakes or t o d m a n p l a So t o d m a n is a term for any sort of fried meat patties, a protein patties, and p l a is fish. Now this is a classic street food that you can find. All over Thailand, and it's actually pretty easy to make too. Great appetizer, spicy and chewy. Mm. Let's get started. So I'm gonna start with the dipping sauce, and this is the same idea as that Thai sweet chili sauce that you can find in the bottles at grocery stores. You know what I'm talking about. Um, and you could use that if you're feeling lazy, but it's better if you make it. So I've got here um, a big chili. So I think this is a spatula. I don't know. It's been in my freezer for a while, and I forgot to label it. So hopefully, <laughs> this is not too spicy. So any sort of red big chili that's not too spicy would work for this. If you can't find anything. Thing. Um, even red bell pepper will do. So I'm just gonna cut this into little chunks right in there. And hmm, it's not very spicy. So and that's important because it determines whether I need to add more Thai chilies or not. So then I'm gonna add these Thai chilies just to make it spicier. If you want to make it mild, just stick with the mild chilies. And then some cloves of garlic. And then to this, I'm gonna add some water to help it blend, and some vinegar. Traditionally, we use white vinegar. It's basically the only kind of vinegar we use in Thai cuisine. But today, I'm using cane vinegar. This is Filipino cane vinegar, which is awesome because it's quite smooth. So I find it, it's not as jarring as white vinegar can be. Yay, Filipino vinegar! What else? I need a little bit of salt. And some sugar, lots of sugar, because this is a sweet and sour sauce. So you need the sugar to balance out the vinegar. And that's it. I'm gonna blitz this up. Now, be careful when you open this. Do not inhale right over it, because chilies plus vinegar. You don't want that. Ooh, I can smell it from here. And for this, like if you have a super blender like a Vitamix, I wouldn't use it because I really want to keep the chili seeds and some chili specks in there. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> too close um, for uh, for visuals. If you use a super blender, you just blitz everything into a smooth thing, and it's just not as pretty. All right, I'm gonna bring this to a simmer and let it simmer for about three to five minutes to cook the garlic, cook the chilies, and reduce the sauce a little bit so it has some viscosity in it. So while my dipping sauce is simmering in the back, I'm gonna make the fish cakes, which is really really easy. The hardest part is getting the right fish. Now in Thailand, we always use a kind of fish called black r a i and it's almost the only thing that that fish is used for. Like to the point where I don't even know what black r a i tastes like in not fish cake form. Um, so here, what I use is basa. So what you want for this. Is something that is tender. If you get a fish that's firm, when you make it, it will be firm, too firm almost. So basa is good. I suspect so would be good. So basa is a type of catfish. So if you can get catfish in your neck of the woods, we can't get catfish in Canada, believe it or not. Um, so try catfish that might work as well. So I've cut up the fish. Hey, check out my brand new food processor. Ah, I got this for Christmas. Bloop. Now the main seasoning for fish cakes is red curry paste. You can make it yourself or you can buy it, but I would caution you against a brand that you know is quite salty. With this one, I'm not gonna add any fish sauce, and I know it'll be fine. So if it's your first time, you probably have to taste a little bit of the mixture. So cook the mixture up, taste it, see if you need to add extra fish sauce. Okay. To make it tender, I'm gonna add an egg yolk. So a little bit of sugar to balance the salt. And you want to make sure the fish is very, very cold because the processing is going to add some heat. Off we go. So you actually want to keep this going for longer than you might think, because at first when you blend it, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be smooth and fine, but it's gonna be a little too runny. The more you process it, the more you sort of develop the protein. And make it stiff. So what you're looking for is for it to be able to hold its shape. Basically, if you hold it up, it shouldn't like it should hold its shape. It shouldn't run. It shouldn't jiggle. It should be able to form 
a cake, basically. So to add aroma and crunch, I'm gonna add some long beans, which I chopped up into little, little pieces. And I've also got some Thai basil, which I've chopped roughly if you're in the place where you can get holy basil, that's really good as well. Chopped kefir lime leaves. This is key right here, some citrusy aroma. You know, citrus and fish always go well together, right? All of this stuff going in. Blech. Yes, you want it to be bouncy and jiggly just like that. See, if you can imagine back in the day, they used to make this using mortar and pestle. Like they, uh, some people still do that today. Um, pound the fish in a mortar and pestle until it's bouncy like this. Lots of labor. Mix all of that in. So traditionally, these fish cakes are deep fried, but this is one of the few things where the deep frying doesn't actually benefit the end result at all um, because we're frying these naked so there's no crust, nothing to get crispy. Street vendors do it because it's a lot faster. But when you're at home like me, you can just pan fry it, shallow fry it. The most important thing is do not touch it with dry hands because it'll stick like nobody's business. So everything that touches this has to be wet. Um, wet my hands and wet my spoon and form just about, you can make it however, whichever size you want. I don't like it too thin. Some people make it really thin. I just find it's not as, it's not as satisfying to chew in the pan. Woo, that's hot so fast. I'm telling you this stove, so powerful. And that's it. And then you fry them on both sides. It'll only take a minute or two. How easy is that? Check these out. So the dipping sauce, I want to show you the dipping sauce that was simmering, you know, just three to five minutes. And this is basically the consistency you're going for. It is a little runnier than the stuff you find in the bottle. And that's what you want because it's quite strong. You just want it to thinly coat the fish cakes. You don't want it like to thickly gloop onto the fish cake. So this is actually perfect. Now, to dress up this dipping sauce a little bit, I've got here the classic accompaniment, some sliced cucumber, some shallots, thinly sliced shallots, and also some roasted ground peanuts. But the peanuts and the shallots are optional. I just think it makes it look nicer and gives it, you know, a little more complexity. And it's still warm, that's great. It's gonna sort of infuse we wilt the shallots a little bit. Oh, I'm so excited. Look how good that looks. Mm. I'm gonna go in with my hands. Dip that. And I also gonna put just a piece of cucumber on it. Mm. That is better than in Thailand. And I'm not even, I know that's a bold statement, but seriously, so good. And, and I'm saying this because in Thailand, a lot of times they, they fry it and they make it so thin and it becomes a little bit leathery and dry. And I think the fish makes a difference. So I think the basa is even more tender than the, the kind of fish that we use. And it gives this, this really nice silky texture, but it's still firm enough to hold its shape, goes so well with that crunch and the Thai basil and that dipping sauce that you can dip anything in that and it'll be good so i hope you give it a try as you can see it's not that hard experiment with uh, different kinds of fish uh, i tried this with rockfish i believe and it wasn't great like it was way too firm so if, if one fish doesn't quite work out try different things and definitely let me know also let me know in the comments if you've had success with other fish and the recipe as always will be on hotthaikitchen.com when you make it send me a photo on facebook twitter or instagram if you haven't subscribed to the show please do so right here so you'll never miss an episode and i will see you next time for your next delicious time meal.